Thank you. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say, I wish I could give you better news, but hacking the Tesla, that's what I got. So <laughs> I hacked a $90,000 car, and all I got was this lousy, lousy coin. <laughs> but seriously, SUV SU is a great coin to have, because the uh, CTO of Tesla flew out to give it to us. And it's the first time in my history in responsible disclosure that a company has been that engaged, that they would fly to a conference and give an award to people who have just eviscerated their main product. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, let's see how this works. OK, so first of all, why did we do it? Well, I mean, that's pretty much obvious. That's why we're all here. Um, the internet things, whether or not you believe the numbers, is going to be huge. Um, but more importantly, these things are going to have a longer lifespan than anything we've ever connected to the internet before. So on the one hand, we're building them more simply than we've ever built them. But on the other hand, we're connecting them for longer. And that pr creates kind of a, a dissonance that's causing a lot of the issues I think we're starting to see. We need to secure these things now. At the end of the day, what we want is what Tesla did, which is just before our talk in black at uh, DEF CON in, in summer this year, they pushed out a patch that patched three out of the six vulnerabilities that we disclosed to them and essentially made the car safe before we gave the talk. That happened automatically. All the user saw was this screen on their car. All they had to do was click to install it, and then transparently their car was fixed, as opposed to what happened with Jeep Chrysler, which was obviously a little bit more embarrassing. We think that the design we encountered in the Tesla Model S is going to be the archetype for, for cars of the future. The way they designed it, I was actually, I was not expecting to be impressed. I was expecting, much like you just described, um, every IoT thing I've hacked in the past has been a shambles. You know, the corners cut left, right, and center, all sorts of issues. The Tesla was a pleasant surprise. Doesn't mean to say we weren't able to compromise it. Unfortunately, we were able to compromise it quite thoroughly, um, but it was a lot harder than I anticipated, and that is good. And some of the things that we were blocked from doing um, it took us substantially longer to achieve are exactly the right things, safety things. Um, so start with a quick overview of the Tesla. Um, a Tesla is not just a car. It's basically a data center on wheels. You've got three primary computers. The instrumentation cluster is a, a, a Linux-based computer system running Ubuntu. Then you have a 17-inch touchscreen in front of you, which is what the user uses to control pretty much everything from the car. That's a, um, uh, also an Ubuntu-based system. And then there's a hidden system called the Gateway, which is running a real-time operating system called FreeRTOS. The Gateway is a pretty interesting little secret. We didn't know about this until we tore the car apart. Um, the looks on my neighbor's faces when they walked past my driveway and saw a $90,000 car in pieces along the driveway was priceless. Um, <laughs> One of them even called the cops. Uh, but you know, they're getting used to me now. Uh, this is the logical architecture of the, the um, Model S. Um, given time, I won't go into it in too much detail. Just to say that the most important thing is, if you look at the way this is designed, there's incredibly well-defined separation between the infotainment systems and the drive critical systems. And it's that separation that makes the Tesla probably the most secure car out there. Um, essentially, the way they've designed it is you have to use the infotainment system to control the car. But you can only control the car by sending commands through the gateway, which then translates them into CAN frames onto the CAN bus, which affects the car. It's almost like a stored procedure style of system that you'd find on databases. And that means you can only call procedures that are there. And that limits the amount of things that you can do on the CAN side. Now, Unfortunately, by the end of our research, we had found ways to punch holes through it, but it took us a long time to get there. And what it tells me is that a, an ordinary hacker who compromises the infotainment system on this car will have very limited ability to influence the drive critical systems. Um, so yeah, hacking this car was literally the Hacker Olympics. We had to hardware hack it. We used wireless hacking, network hacking, browser hacking, Linux hacking, binary reverse engineering, protocol reverse engineering, and custom tool development. It took a, a grand total of uh, three months in the end, probably 
working pretty much every single weekend to, to get it done. And most of that was just pulling things apart and trying to understand how they work. And the first thing was physical disassembly. And if you, want, if you happen to want to take apart a $90,000 sports car, this is what you need. It's uh, $75 worth of uh, tools from Amazon. Um, I highly, highly recommend getting these door panel clip removers because the Tesla is, the majority of it is secured by these little metal clips that are an absolute nightmare to deal with. Uh, and the one thing, one warning I will give you is if you are removing these panels, you will hear a sound that sounds like plastic breaking. In most circumstances, a sound like plastic breaking when you're dismantling something doesn't really bother you. But when it's a $90,000 sports car that you don't own, it starts to have a bit more of an impact. Um, you have to make it sound like it's going to break to open it, unfortunately. As we found three times, we would go a little bit further and it wouldn't open. It would go a little bit further. Anyway, eventually we got there. Um, this is what it looks like taking one of these cars apart. Those are the clips I mentioned that are an absolute nightmare. So first, the instrumentation cluster. Um, pretty simple uh, Ubuntu-based system running on a NVIDIA Tegra-based um, CPU board. Not much opportunity to play with it, to be honest. Um, it does have JTAG ports, but there's no USB interface, no serial interface. Um, it has a weird network interface to connect it to the other parts, but not anything really remarkable to do anything. 17-inch touchscreen is another matter. Huge number of connections at the back. Um, when you pop it open, you can revert the Tesla into being almost an, uh, a large iPad. Um, and it's kind of amusing to run around the house with a Tesla in your hands. Um, it scares your wife, though. Um, and this is what it looks like. First interesting thing, a micro SD card. Second interesting thing, an SD card. Um, and a USB port. Then there's this kind of weird hanging cable, which we weren't sure what it was until we stuck some wires into it. Um, this is kind of like the, the standard hacker practice. You find a thing, stick wires into it, and see what happens. Um, in, our, in our case, rather than blowing up, what we found was Ethernet. And it's always a 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> so possible ways we found in so far, removable memory cards, SD, MMC, USB, and an Ethernet cable. So, Next step is to start pro probing it. The browser is really old, really, really old. Uh, in fact, the whole uh, Linux system is old. It's running Ubuntu 10.10, not even an LTS version. It's an old version of Ubuntu. And that explains why they're stuck on this really old version of WebKit. And of course, because it's an old version of WebKit, it's got a ton of vulnerabilities, a bunch of CVEs. This is one particular vulnerability, which is the same vulnerability that was actually used to compromise the PS Vita. Um, so there's plenty of documentation for this vulnerability on how to use it as well. So it's not like it's an unknown vulnerability on the car. Um, we could crash the car with it, no pun intended. Um, what we couldn't do was we couldn't get uh, code execution off of it. I now know why that's the case, and I'm going to go back and, and sort that out. But, uh, they have a really weird memory architecture, and the way things have been set up is very strange. Uh, but obviously, we didn't know that because we're coming from this as black box. The USB was also quite interesting, but a dead end. Um, what we found from the USB was it gave the, Tez the NVIDIA equivalent of the Android device bridge. So it gives you a low-level serial interface to the, um, uh, the system, and you can actually talk to the bootloader from it. However, the bootloader was secured. Um, you have to have the bootloader password to access it, so you can't do anything. So another dead end. Memory cards, <laughs> a little bit more interesting. Uh, we found a zip file called carkeys.tar. Um, and yes, inside the car keys are the cars keys. <laughs> These are the VPN keys for the car. Uh, this is what it uses when it talks back to the, te the uh, Tesla mothership. The car, pretty much all the time, is connected to Tesla. Whatever you're doing is being transmitted back to Tesla. And the car has to update itself through Tesla all the time. They do this sensibly over a VPN. What's less sensible is storing those keys in plain text in a file on a removable piece of media inside the car. Oh, I'm rather thankful that they did, to be honest. Uh, the MMC card was also quite interesting. It was basically full of map data. So there's a mapping system called Navigon that they use. But what was really interesting is there's a script file on there that's used to update those maps. And all it looks for is a file in the root directory called dot update me or something. When it finds it, it runs a script. The script runs as root on a removable card. 
That's not very clever. Uh, Wi-Fi, no particularly interesting ports. Everything is done over uh, OpenVPN. And the OpenVPN is configured correctly. Uh, we tried to man in the middle of it, but it's actually checking certificates and, and such like. So this is, the, this is the kind of the oxymoron of the Tesla Model S. It's been designed to be quite a secure system. It's got a lot of afterthought in it about how we should do things right. But somebody somewhere cut a lot of corners. And it's that corner cutting that completely undermined it. And there's a very valuable lesson there for anyone who's designing a complex thing. And that is, you can put all the money and all the resources you like into designing a secure system. But if at the end of the day, when it comes to productionization of your thing, people cut corners, it becomes meaningless. So connecting to the, um, the LAN was interesting. Um, as soon as you connect it, you get hit by a UDB broadcast storm, about 500 to 1,000 packets a second. Looks like that. Um, Nmap. The CID is the 17-inch uh, screen. Um, this is what it gives you. Uh, you've got a, quite a lot of open services. The most interesting one was uh, Open uh, X11. For those of you who, like me, remember hacking back in the 80s and 90s, uh, the very first thing I did when I saw that was I went back, I got my laptop, and I put X googly eyes up on the car. <laughs> Silly, but, you know. Um, oh, yeah, more. <laughs> And then there's an instrumentation cluster, a lot less open. Again, still have the open X. Now, the X11, they shut down very quickly. So we weren't able to actually route the car that way, which was a bit of a bummer. But if you, if you enjoy doing these things, it's just prolonging it and therefore fun. And the gateway has even less open. SSH validates. So next vulnerabilities are there's a lot of the applications in there. Because of the old kernel version, because of the old Ubuntu version, they're all old. And because they're old, they have vulnerabilities in them. And that's a, another important lesson. That is, if you leave these things out there, they will become vulnerable with time. Everything becomes vulnerable with time. And you have to have a way to update them. Tesla painted themselves into a corner. And this is going to come through as a very valuable lesson for people designing things that last more than a few years. Because you may have every intention of updating your software and keeping um, vulnerabilities under control, patching it when the issues come out. But what happens when your software is out of date? The average lifespan of an LTS version of software is about four years. The average lifespan of an LTS server version is five years. The average lifespan of a car is 20 years. So what do you do with your vulnerable software when your car is 10 years old? Because now there is no repository that you can go to to get an update. In fact, there probably isn't even an update. And this is something we're going to have to think about when we build long-lasting things, especially things like cars and buildings. How are we going to keep updating software vulnerabilities when the software manufacturers have long gone away and perhaps don't even exist? So yeah, X11 was open, which allowed us to gain access, but was subsequently patched by Tesla. Um, the silly things that we did with the ability with X11, put up all sorts of logos on the car, which just seemed like the right thing to do. Um, this was really interesting. Uh, they'd built in an automated patch management system. So there's a, a dedicated service listening on a special port on both the IC and the CID. When you talk to it, it gives you all sorts of information. And Tesla had made an art, some arbitrary decisions about what things were sensitive and what things weren't. So if you were trying to do something that was deemed to be sensitive, like apply firmware, it asks you for a password or for a token. If you were asking it for sensitive information, like the users on the system or access to sensitive config files, it would also ask you for a password. If you ask for innocuous stuff like status, and I say innocuous in quotes because it really is not innocuous, it just dumps it out. And status gives a lot of information. Um, when you're a hacker looking at a black box system requiring information before you can compromise, that's gold. That, I mean, right there, that status information gave me enough information to compromise the car right away. Um, and the single most important thing is the last line you see at the bottom there. Handshake URL. That URL is an internal URL for Tesla for downloading the current firmware for that car. 
if only we had some VPN keys. <laughs> so we ran into a minor setback in the middle of this, um, and that was that uh, uh, Te Tesla noticed other people playing around with this dangling cable, the Ethernet cable, and so they built a simple security model around it. And the security model was you had to broadcast a UDP byte sequence every 30 seconds, otherwise it would keep you on an isolated VLAN and prevent you from talking to any of the systems. Well, at that point, we hadn't proceeded that far with the car, so we weren't able to recreate the tokens or work out what was going on, so we were shut out. Thankfully, the hacker habit of sticking wires in things came in really handy again. And so what we did was we stuck wires into the back of the, uh, the, um, uh, the IC Ethernet interface, created a cable from that, and wired it into a switch. Uh, and that was enough, because basically that bridged the uh, IC to the main system and allowed the IC to authenticate every 30 seconds for us. Meanwhile, we had nine other switch ports that we could plug into and use for our own purposes. It's, again, like a really clever security system, but they didn't think about what happens if you put a switch between it. Right. Anyway, so as I mentioned, the firmware URL was really the, the best thing. Um, quite a lot of download later, we got a, 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 a firmware file system. Most important thing to note here is the firmware file system is not encrypted. They could have shut the, the door right there and then if they'd passed a proper encrypted file system authenticated using keys stored and secured with a TPM on the system or something along those lines. They did not. So we were able to download the firmware, decompress the firmware, and have a look inside it. Inside the firmware, we found a SquashFS compressed file system with a bunch of stuff. So, um, oh yeah, some interesting things we found. Um, like strange, random scripts. Like, why would you need to clean up statuses with 1969 in them inside your logs? Anyway. But perhaps even more strange was, um, oh, it's not going to show the whole URL, is it? Um, so basically, this is a, the URL. I'll, the rest of it, read it out, is um, firmwarebundles.vn.teslamotors.com 4597 custom slash knights who say me. <laughs> and when you download it, <laughs> this is sitting on a server inside Tesla. <laughs> okay, okay, well. So, back to the file system. Um, so what's the first thing you look for? Password files, of course. Well, we didn't find any password files or private keys on the uh, CID file system. In fact, that file system looked to be incomplete. What I later learned was it gives an incremental firmware update, only updating the stuff it thinks it needs to update. So we were just unlucky in one regards, lucked out in the other. However, we found the shadow file for the IC, and inside the shadow file for the IC, what happened made me cry. It made me cry because we cracked it in less than a second. That should not be the case for a secure system. I won't give out the usernames and passwords because Tesla asked me not to. Um, let's just say default administration accounts. I mean, you can guess them. Right? If you know which companies they work with, you can work them out. They are now patched, which is why I'm even talking about it. Um, but the sheer fact that they had that kind of stupidity sitting inside there was crazy. And it also then leads to another, kind of, another thing you have to understand about building a complex connected system. And that is, because you have no control over who has access to it or what they do to it, the old security axiom of your security is only as good as the weakest link in your train doesn't apply here, because your security has to be better than the weakest link in your chain. Because if any one system can be compromised, and that can lead to complete compromise of the whole system, it's game over. Because the chances are they will always compromise one part of your system. You just have to stop them being able to compromise anymore. And this is where things went horribly wrong for Tesla, because uh, as soon as we gained access to the accounts, we found out that there were sudoers, which meant we had root access. <coughs> Root access allowed us to peruse the entire file system on the instrumentation cluster. And, well, so it didn't, didn't have the CID there. It's a security token. 
what we found was they have a rotating root password. Tesla 1, Tesla 2, changes every 24 hours. And, well, I did mention it here. Oh, there it goes. And the IC stores that token in plain text. So basically, there's a directory on the instrumentation cluster that contains their new root password every 24 hours when they rotate it. And so with root on that system, all we had to do was go to the directory and read it, and then SSH into the CID. And now we have root on CID. And that basically means we have a complete root at control of the entire instrumenta instrumentation and infotainment system on the car. And that then later on led to you know, basically reversing the whole system, working out how the UDP um, byte sequence commands work for locking us out of the Ethernet. And literally at that point, everything just starts falling apart because the last security barrier has been crossed and now we can sit there simply picking things apart and reversing them. Uh, we got DSA keys that allowed us to SSH in without the passwords in the future. Um, uh, I, have a, I have several DSA keys for several high-profile folks. Um, let's just say if I need to get access to their cars, I can. I wouldn't be doing anything like that, though, because it would be unethical. Not unless it's really, really funny. Um, with the tokens, we find we can do a lot more. We can also now... We understand how the token system works, and we can request the information from Tesla themselves. So now, with a VPN key, I can ping Tesla, and it will give me the token for any car, which is very scary, because at that point, all of their cars are potentially exposed. Thankfully, they've fixed this also. Um, we found updates for all the car side of it. Uh, we found slightly scary. There's a default SSID that every single Tesla car will connect to. Can you imagine what it's called? Yes, Tesla service. Basically, if you have a Tesla service uh, SSID and you know what the WPA password is, which is handily cached on disk, um, you can make any Tesla in the world connect to your wireless system as it, as it drives past. Which, and uh, there's, there's not a lot you can do which doesn't cross lines and upset people, but it is possible to make a Wi-Fi pineapple that makes a Tesla honk its horn every time they drive past. Controlling the vehicle. Now, this is the, the bit that's heavily caveated. We were able to reverse engineer how to do this, but I don't want this to detract from how good a job Tesla did in designing a secure system. We really had to use all of our skills. And I'm, I, without blowing my own trumpet, I think I am a pretty good hacker. Um, it took me weeks to work out how to do this. Lots of binary reverse engineering, working out how to, to get things passed. And even still, um, we also wrote an app that allows us to decode the uh, data that's traveling back and forth in the car. Um, let's see. That's all we ended up being able to do. We can power off the car. We can start it without keys, lock and unlock it, open and close the sunroof, open and close the trunk or frunk control the headlights, control the internal lights, change the suspension, change the climate, and honk the horn. That's pretty limited. And it's limited because those relate to uh, predefined uh, commands on the gateway system. So we were able to work out what the byte sequences were to trigger the right command, which then triggers a CAN frame, makes it do things. That's very limited compared to what I could do if I could just send a CAN frame through. Um, Sadly, that we were able to further compromise that with a lot more work. But what it shows is a basic drive-by compromise of the browser. You are not going to be able to do anything really critical to this car. It's going to take a, a persistent hack to compromise the car, rather than just someone accidentally hitting a website that does something bad to their browser. Oh. And so then came to the, the let's play with this and see what we could do bit. And so we basically set up a, a we wanted to make sure all the changes we made to this were non-persistent because we didn't want to do anything that might have an impact on safety for this car later on. So like, this isn't just a computer we're hacking. This is a computer that goes at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> and the thought that you know, this might end up spinning off the road at some point was kind of a concern. So we did everything as limited as possible. 
we set up an SSH tunnel between the CID and a server on, on, a, on the internet, and then secured a tunnel between uh, my phone and the car. And then we used that to send commands to the car. And we tested out a few things, you know, what happens if the car is driving, can we make the, um, the trunk open, can we make the, the lights go on and off. And what we found is another really good security feature of the Tesla, which is someone has obviously thought on the can and drive critical side of things, do I want to allow unusual commands to have an effect when I am in a, sp in a particular state? So if I am driving, do I want someone to be able to open the trunk? And the answer is no. And so even if you explicitly send the command through, the API wouldn't let you send it, but you've bypassed the API, you're now sending it directly to the gateway and say, open the trunk, it just gives you an error noise. That's pretty good. Um, what's even better is what happens when you try to drive the car. And hopefully there's, there's how am I doing for time? We've got a little bit of time, okay. At this time, I'll show you the video of exactly what happens when you basically switch off everything inside the car as it's driving and the effect that it has, because it's actually pretty, pretty impressive. Oh, actually, here it is. So um, what you saw there was the car, if it's going at about seven miles an hour or so, and you kill the systems and basically cause all the computers to die, the safety protocols kick in. And the handbrake comes on, and the car stops. If you do it at anything faster than about seven miles an hour, the safety protocols block the handbrake from coming on, and it retains control with steering. So even though all the computers are off, you can still steer the car. You've got no brakes, um, <laughs> but you can steer the car. <laughs> Which, it's, it's not perfect, but it's pretty damn impressive. It means you can safely steer the car to the side of the road as it slows down and stop, which is pretty good compared to, I think, pretty much everything else. Um, as opposed to what would have happened if the handbrakes had kicked in at speed, you would have seen something much more unpleasant. As far as I'm aware, Tesla is the only car on the market that does this, that allows you to retain control of the vehicle when things get powered down, and that, that has this amount of separation between drive critical and infotainment. Um, if Chrysler had that amount of separation, they would not have had to have the recall. So what's Tesla doing about it? Uh, they pushed out uh, an update. They fixed, it says they fixed two. They actually, fit in the end, fixed three vulnerabilities. Um, the weak CID passwords that were mentioned, the information disclosure. They also fixed a kernel vulnerability that uh, would have allowed privilege escalation from uh, getting access to the system. And then they also increased the hardening of the, the system as a whole. And finally, they hired... Um, a new head of security to sit and take in this information and treat security problems within their car as software engineering problems rather than as automotive engineering problems, which is the right way to solve this issue. Because you know, in the automotive world, you fix most things with a recall. But in the software engineering world, you fix most things with a software update. We need to move more towards the software update things with connected cars because you can't recall every time someone has a problem with their browser. Uh, otherwise, every single car will be in the shop all the time, which might be good for the environment. Uh, so yeah, what they did right, uh, they had an awesome update process, great VPN configuration, rotating account passwords, really good strong isolation between vehicle and infotainment systems, uh, a structured API for commands between infotainment and vehicle networks, what they needed to improve. Uh, the Tesla Wi-Fi uses a permanent static key. They should use WPA Enterprise. The system was designed with the perimeter security model. It's hard on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. 
efforts to lock down the Ethernet really were only a speed bump to us. Access to the system, access to one system gives access to the others via shared security token. Better to assume that any individual system can be compromised. Uh, the browser will get hacked. Let's face it, WebKit, it gets hacked all the time. If you look at the number of phones that have been compromised through WebKit hacks, the number of consoles that have been hacked by it, it's probably one of the most popular hacking vectors. Uh, the security token stored in plain text in the file system was just crazy. The VPN key stored in plain text in the removable SD card is also crazy. Uh, and the fact that they have ARM trust zone and weren't using it was also crazy. They had all the tools there to build an even more secure system, but just seemed to stop. Traffic between the IC gateway and CID was unencrypted and should have been. Um, only some protocols are authenticated, which means that there was a risk of man in the middle or impersonation. Um, and you know, they should just assume that attackers own the, the LAN. And we think that what every car company in the world should do is just three simple things. One is the OTA update process. Two, ensure there is strong isolation of vehicle and infotainment systems. And three, harden each and every component individually. What well, this means for IoT. In IoT, the user and attacker are interchangeable. You have no control over what your user does to your thing. The old security axiom, in a secure system, your security is only good as your weakest system in the chain, does not work for IoT. In IoT, you should assume that any exposed component will be compromised and secure, inter and secure other interconnected systems accordingly. You should assume that an attacker will get their hands on your firmware and protect it accordingly. It's easy to encrypt your firmware. There are, there's lots of standards and, and, and recipes for doing this right. There's no excuse not to do it. You should also assume that someone could impersonate your thing and use its access rights to connect to its network. We could have done a lot more with the access we had. From talking to people, my understanding is, number one, from those VPN concentrators, we could have gotten to any Tesla car in the world. Number two, we were in the factory. And so we could have played with big robots. That last one made me a little sad. Um, what, what was a little even scarier is a friend of mine just told me he's just reported a vulnerability to Tesla, that they had a WPA password protected wireless access point sitting inside the factory that gave access to a whole bunch of these systems directly. All you had to do was drive into the Tesla car park. So I, I, it's hard to give props to a company when they keep on making silly things like this. But to be fair, I can't praise Tesla enough for the level of engagement they gave us and the willingness to work with us and the way they fix these issues. So many companies I've worked with in the past have not been this willing to work with security researchers. I, I, I can genuinely count on one hand the number of companies that have given me a warm welcome when I've come up to them and said, hey, let's talk about the security vulnerability that I just found. Everything should go through a hardening process. Remove locked default accounts, identify and secure diagnostic interfaces, remove all generic tests, debug tools, certs, files, and employ good cryptographic hygiene. Do not arbitrarily reuse certificates, tokens, keys. Do not store sensitive tokens in plain text and leverage trusted platform modules where available. Oh, that's it. There's a clear mismatch. This is the final thing, which is, I think, the hardest problem for us to solve. There's a clear mismatch between the life of some things and the life of the software they run. And this is a big problem. Ubuntu server has five years of support. The Model S has an eight-year infinite mile warranty and the average car lifespan of 15 to 20 years. And this affects smart buildings too. I don't know what the answer to this is. Tesla's biggest issue with this is they have to get their kernels from Tesla, from Tegra, from NVIDIA. And NVIDIA get their kernels from the Linux source trees and update them and put additional things into them. And it means there, is, there are multiple players in this model before a patch can be prepared or a kernel update can be made. It's exactly this model that caused Android fragmentation. And it's this model that's going to cause IoT fragmentation if we're not careful about it and prevent this from being the nightmare that I think it could be. And, and last of all, it wasn't just me involved in this. There are a ton of people I used for research and, and help. And these are the, their photos as a kind of credit to them for their help. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>